Hi, and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. So today we are going to learn how to play a traditional American folk song, which is called The Yellow Rose of Texas. Most of you have probably heard it, even non-Americans, just because it's a one of those like super famous, really catchy tunes. So we're going to talk a little bit about the backstory of this song, which is like a little, little sorted. We're going to talk about some of the remakes by Mitch Miller and Elvis Presley. And as always, you will find the sheet music linked below in the description box. As you're probably already well aware, I like to start piano tutorials with a little bit of backstory just so you kind of know what you're getting into. And like I mentioned, the past of this one is like a little, little sorted because if you might have guessed from the name, it's called The Yellow Rose of Texas. The song was written in Texas in the mid 1800s. So it's like putting two and two together here, like Texas, Deep South, mid 1800s, peaceful and happy place for all races. But I'll spare you the political commentary and we'll just kind of like focus on the music here. The gist of the story was this though. The protagonist in the lyrics, so like the main character, was an African-American man who was in love with the Yellow Rose of Texas, who was like literally in the lyrics, a yellow girl, which means in that time she was a girl of mixed races. Yay, history! I was looking into this too because like I was wondering if it was like a play on words or something, but... As far as I can tell, there's not actually a yellow rose of Texas. So the title is like purely racial. But happily, the lyrics 25 years later changed. I'll, I'll put all the original lyrics and the modified lyrics and stuff in the, the blog post, which I'll link down below. Just if you kind of like want to look at that. There was also a Civil War remake with like changing a verse to fit the war and everything like that. But but it was a good thing that they were changing the lyrics because there was like, there was some questionable lyrics. Like one of them was, uh, she's the sweetest rose of color. And they changed that to she's the sweetest little flower. Just little things like that where they could like maintain the, the gist of the song without it being quite so overtly racial. So why then are we learning this song? So there's a few reasons that I think we should learn it. One of them is it's important to learn songs from different cultures. I've showed you, uh, I've shown you a couple of Canadian songs and you know, I like, I like exploring folk songs in, in different cultures. So instead of just doing like all Canadian music, I figured I'd start branching into American music and it's a catchy song and it's a well-known song. A lot of people know it and it's got some things that we can learn from it, which we're going to get into a little bit later in this video. But another reason to learn is just, we, we shouldn't just avoid avoid songs that have an iffy past because not every song is going to have like a bright and shiny past, right? And it's kind of silly to avoid that because we're like too sensitive because then we don't get a well-rounded view of history, be it musical history or otherwise. So those are my thoughts. But anyway, I told you I'd kind of spare you that, but then I, I didn't, but that's, that's okay. Anyway, let's hop to the keyboard and play this song. So if you didn't already recognize that song before you listen to it, you probably will now have it in your head all day. I've had it in my head like all week. It's one of those songs. But anyway, if you wanna hear some popular remakes of this that, that aren't just piano, like the full versions, you can go to my blog, it's linked below. Um, there's Mitch Miller who had it as a number one hit in 1955. And he sort of like popularized it for the masses. And Elvis Presley also has a version two. It's like a little bit different. He incorporates another song into it, kind of like a medley. But yeah, go to the blog and check that out if you're curious. So let's take a look at the music here. So the first thing I want to talk about is the song form. So far in terms of different types of songs, we've done minuets, we've done waltzes, but the Yellow Rose of Texas is neither of those. If you remember anything about minuets and waltzes, they're generally like a little bit slower, usually in 3-4 time, which obviously this is not. So what the Yellow Rose of Texas is, and you might have actually guessed this already, is a march. Without getting too in depth, we'll, we'll dedicate a whole video to marches in the future, but the gist of it is marches are generally around uh, 120 beats per minute, which is about, it'd be like a fast walk, fast walk, so like, da, da, da. That's probably, I'm guessing, but that, that's my like mental interpretation of 120. Modern marches tend to be in the 2-4 time signature, but they're not always going to be in 2-4. I mean, sometimes you might see 4-4 or 2-2, so that's not necessarily a guarantee that it's a march, but it is something to look out for. They're never in triple time, so you won't see a march in 3-4, for example. 
And as you probably noticed from the recording, marches tend to have like a really strong rhythm. And they're frequently performed by military bands, which should be a given. One of the reasons the piano interpretation sounds so strong and rhythmic is just due to the left hand accompaniment. So I could have just played regular, just like kind of solid chords, and it doesn't sound bad, it sounds good still, but we lose a lot of the energy that you get when you kind of dissect the chord and play something on every beat. So instead of just kind of like holding it as a whole note, getting something going on every beat and hopping around kind of gives it more energy, which makes sense, of course. So um, I, I don't want to use broken chords for this, so when, when I was making a decision about how to arrange it, broken chords have a little bit too much of a mellow sound, which make that sound a little bit too ballad -y. And we did that kind of things with um, green sleeves. That kind of thing. So it, it's really not the right kind of tune for it to be that broken pattern. So what I do instead is what I call, is kind of silly, but I call it the bottom tops, okay? So it's basically exactly what the title says. To play a bottom top, you play the bottom note of the chord followed by the top two, and that's all there is to it. So a G chord would be this, a simplified D7 would be this, and it's a very, very simple left-hand pattern just kind of on its own. All right, so let's just look at some other basics on this page. So first of all, what key is this song in? Well, look at the key signature for our answer. We have an F sharp. There are two options of keys that have an F sharp. So there's a major option and a minor option. So the major key that has an F sharp is the key of G. And alternately, this could be in the minor key, E minor, which also has an F sharp. So these, these scales slash keys just share the F sharp and the key signature. So the answer to if this is in a minor key or a major key is uh, pretty easy to find at the beginning. So first of all, the left hand starting with a G major chord, that's a pretty good indicator. And if you look at the first few notes, we have um, B, C, and D, and like just various chords of G major or various notes of the G major chord, so that kind of gives away the answer. Also, we got some difficult Italian here, moderato. So this is going back to when we were discussing marches a minute ago. So they're about the speed of a fast walk. So we use the Italian word moderato, which means moderately, obviously, and we're it's not fast, right? So fast would be allegro. And even though marching is a fast walk, I would like an allegro more to like a running speed as opposed to like brisk walking. Lastly, let's take a look at some of these chords here. The chord pattern is really, really simple in this song. You simply alternate between a G major chord and a D7 chord, and those are literally the only two chords in the entire song, so nice and simple. To get a little technical with you, I'm gonna write out the letters of a G major scale just really quickly here. And if you remember from a few minutes ago, there's an F sharp. All right, so G major chord would be, that would correspond with like the, the first note of the scale. So I'm gonna represent that with a Roman numeral one, uh, which is also known as the tonic note or the tonic chord. So here's our tonic chord right here. And then looking to the scale as well. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. D is the fifth note or chord of the scale. So we're gonna mark that with a Roman numeral V. And since this is played as like a D7, not just a D chord, we would mark it with a seven as well. So like V7 here. And this is gonna be important just a little bit later on, but I, I just kinda of wanna show you that now. But the least you need to know is you're alternating between the tonic and dominant chord constantly throughout this song. So the reason I wanna kinda of get you acquainted with the Roman numerals and stuff is because in the next couple of videos, we're gonna be talking about key changing and modulation because a lot of marches, including the Yellow Rose of Texas, do change keys if you listen to the full version. So my sheet music version doesn't have a key change, but if you listen to the Elvis version or the Mitch Miller version, you'll hear that uh, key change like about three quarters of the way through. So it's like if the song is written in the key of G major and it's like centered around that G, then a key change is gonna like take it to a different key entirely. And it's gonna still like sound like the tune, but it's gonna be played on different notes, like either higher or lower. So that's the gist of what key changing is, just to kind of like <laughs> preemptively get you acquainted with it. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you have fun practicing it. This is a pretty simple song to play, but it's a good way to get acquainted with some uh, standard chords in the key of G major and just have a little bit of fun. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already subscribed, you can hit the button, but you know how to, you don't need me to tell you that. All right, catch you later.
Sorry, I keep getting hair in my face. Let me try that again. <laughs>